fancy. It's a word that we don't necessarily relate to faith because we sometimes think that it turns us into a bunch of snobs. And Jesus was far from a snob. But what Jesus did was he came down to a low level just to elevate us to his. And so what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to elevate our palates, our sensibilities, and truly hunger for the things that we can only get to if we will be elevated from this life to the next. So stick around on Savoring Our Faith here on EWTN. It's all about elevating the palate today, uh, not necessarily to be fancy, but to help us to reach a higher level of flavor, faith, and obviously our food. Today's menu is going to consist of a beautifully uh, herb-crusted seared French lamb chop. It's going to be accompanied with a bell pepper cup stuffed with some creamy polenta, starting off with an avocado and salmon, I guess salad appetizer, with a little drizzle of some lime and olive oil. And to help us understand fancy does not mean snobby. It means really a deeper appreciation for things. We've got a very special guest and a good friend and no stranger to EWTN, Father Mark, the co-host of Life on the Rock. That's Thank right. you so much for being here. Well, good to be here. Oh good my gosh, here. it's great. Now, well, I thought I was coming to eat. Am you, I coming to cook? You or are eat? going to, well, you know, you've got the apron on, which is basically a very dalmatic thing. You know, the apron is like the dalmatic that we get as deacons, so you're gonna help cook. Okay. But okay. you know what? Even first of all, do you like to cook? I'm, I'm, not, I'm a novice at You're it. You're a novice, novice at it. it. <laughs> so basically, this really big knife scares you. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Actually, what I'm going to do is just have you come around here so that you can uh, kind of see what we've got going on. This is going to be for the polenta. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just uh, get that fired up and pour that. Uh, let's see. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Now, do me a favor and then just carefully pour some of that broth into that saucepan. That's going to be for our creamy polenta. And I'm actually going to just score this lamb chop. You can see it's French cut. And what we mean by French cut is that the meat, this is basically a lot of tendons and a lot of fat. And so what butchers will do is we'll cut down into it and they'll scrape it off to make it not only a little bit more you know, beautiful for the cooking process, it also makes it easier to eat. These are gonna be like lollipops for us. Good stuff, huh? Now, hey, Father, I'm gonna score this on an angle and then back and forth so you'll see just like a little bit of uh, some designing on it. Now, do you, first of all, like to eat fancy food? I do. Really? I do. But you know what's really funny? You're a Franciscan and I'm a priest. We're not supposed to be eating fancy. You know, you know what that is? That's Pelagian theology. Let's help clarify exactly what we mean by fancy does not mean ignorance and simplicity of life and poverty doesn't mean that we become ignoramus and we kind of reach for the lower things in life. I mean, as St. Francis would have taught, first of all, did St. Francis eat fancy at all? Well, he would instruct the brothers to eat what is put before you. And I can speak as a priest, you know, people invite you to their homes or take you out to eat sometimes. And certainly we accept all that in the spirit of charity and there and with gratitude you know, that God's providing this. You know, and that's that's huge. I'm just basically putting salt and pepper. You can do this. I know you can. And hopefully so can you. Uh, it's, it's such a good thing for people to understand that because seasoning, salt and pepper on both sides, because I sometimes think people, you know, are just kind of weirded out. Sometimes if I get invited to a nice restaurant by, uh, you know, some really great parishioners and we want to celebrate with them, you know, I've actually gotten emails from people saying, if that's simplicity of life and if that's poverty, I want to be a priest too. Hey. Seriously, you know, that's just not the reality. All right, I'm going to put breadcrumbs on top of this, and also I'm going to fuse a little bit more flavor by using just the, um, the, the greeny part of these, this particular rosemary, which works perfect with uh, the lamb. So what we've got is just rosemary. I'm going to mince this up. 
And you know what's really nice about this is people might think it's fancy, but it's really very simple food. I mean, you can get rosemary grown in your yard, and lamb is a very common staple uh, protein in a lot of Mediterranean countries. Frenching it just simply means you know a little cutting technique. It just takes a little bit of time, and that's not a big deal at all. Do me a favor, put about two tablespoons of olive oil in that and get that pan heated up. Here's how we're going to infuse flavor. Rubbing this stuff in, you know what I probably should have done is added the rosemary into it first. And by scoring it, we'll be able to get some of, uh, scoring it basically means making these, uh, you got it. There you go. <laughs> Putting these little lines in the, uh, the fat back of this chop. What does that do when you do that? It's gonna put flavor into it. And, uh, and you know, flavor and fancy, that's why I'm wearing cufflinks. I've got my more formal gear. And, and I honestly think that if there's one thing that we as a church and a people of faith can show is dignity. You know, and a lot of times people think that dignity and fancy just turns into stops. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sophistication doesn't mean being a snob, hardly. As a matter of fact, uh, a truly sophisticated person will understand what it means to be with the rich and to be with the poor. True sophistication shows that we understand our dignity and we're willing to share that with others and in so doing, bring the dignity out of them so that they can see uh, what are they destined for? They're destined for a kingdom in heaven. Oh, you got that boiling pretty well. Yeah. Now let's go ahead and add the polenta, which is basically, you know, um, cornmeal. It's like grits, but yellow. And so we're gonna add that. And then let me give you a spoon so you can stir it and keep that going. And let's drop, oh, you did drop. He knows what he's doing. He dropped the heat down because it was overdoing it. You know what's really interesting? And I'm not here to judge anyone, so don't be all upset when you hear this. But I've gone to really poor churches and the people dress up for church. And then I go to places that are, you know, known for some wealth. And people are coming in with like, you know, looking a little slobby. And look, I completely get it. People want to be comfortable. But I just think that we can see if the meal of the Last Supper is a dignified meal, one that raises our sensibility as to the dignity of who we are as God's children, then guess what we'll do? We'll have that reflected. So in our appearances, I'm basically making sure that this nonstick pan is fully coated with olive oil because I'm gonna sear this into the pan on both sides, get it nice and crusty at first, and then I'm gonna pop it into the oven and it's gonna finish off in there. So here we go. And you're gonna hear a nice little splatter, and that's a good sign. Ah, not so bad. Let me get rid of this, and let me get rid of this, and I'm gonna actually um, start with our bell pepper cup. All right, for this, a little bit of olive oil in that little pan, you are a perfect sous chef. <laughs> Let me ask you, uh, do you, what do you cook and uh, what have you cooked and what do you like to cook and what do you like to eat? If you wanna have a fancy meal, what, what, what do you like to eat? I love Italian food. All right. Um, I make oatmeal every morning. Oatmeal. I with the raisins it. and with the raisins, cinnamon, cinnamon, honey, some brown. Oh, you instead of brown sugar, you use the some, honey, and then uh, some pecans usually. And some what? Pecans or pecans, as they would say. Yeah, yeah no, you're yeah. right. <laughs> but uh, I don't really make anything fancy. I'll take my spaghetti sauce out of a jar. What 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 would be the fanciest thing you have ever eaten? Ever eaten? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know. Probably. Uh, Probably escargot. Maybe escargot. Like yeah. Oh, so you're, you're, you're into snails, huh? No, I'm kidding. With you. <laughs> well, that's exactly what it is. And it's really funny, again, because escargot is kind of super fancy food these days, but it's really not an expensive ingredient. That ingredient is actually snails, for goodness sakes. Hey, I'm just mincing up very quickly some of this red bell pepper because I'm actually going to actually put it into the polenta as well. Things are going very smoothly here as we make this fancy meal. 
You know, that's why I'm wearing the cufflinks. I'm wearing my gelée. Can you do me a favor and mix that all up and make sure that that's just where we need it to be in terms of the cooking process. Sometimes we may actually need to add a little bit more water to it. So let me just take that from you real quick. I'm gonna add some water and then I'm basically going to, um... ah, there we go. So that's gonna be about two and a half cups of liquid. Yeah, go ahead and mix that all around. Time for me to turn this around. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Look how beautiful that is. That scoring of the meat does all the wonders in the world to make sure that the flavors are all gonna seep in there. And guess what I'm gonna do? I am going to do something pretty fancy. Put it in the oven, no big deal. I'm gonna come around you, put it in the oven. I've got this preheat at a pretty high temperature, 400 degrees. Make sure if you do this, you use, watch, you use an oven safe pan. In other words, there's no plastic on this handle whatsoever. So in you go, and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this right here to remind me that that's going to be hot. Common sense. And you know what's missing in dignity? Common sense. You know, if you really knew who you were, I think it would reflect in how we act, how we live, and how we dress. Here's the neat part. This is a regular bell pepper. I am going to, I just basically sectioned off maybe about an inch, and I'm just going to cut the ribbing out of it, the ribbing right off of it, and guess what that's gonna do? Serve as a cup for my polenta. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Fancy. So we've got this going on, heating up like this, and we're gonna give this a slow saute. Perfect. Let me just get the ribbing off of that. People say, and I don't know if it's true, that the white ribbing here uh, gives us the indigestion. Some people, you know, when you eat like a red pepper, you kind of get a little gaseous and it makes you, you know, causes you to belch. I understand that if you remove that, that can help. Little gross knowledge, but uh, we're trying to be fancy here. <laughs> And those manners are so important. So we're gonna let that just season up with a little bit of salt in the oil to give it some flavor, and then some Italian herbs. This is not difficult. When it sears in this oil, it'll take in some of those flavors. I'm gonna do it on this side too. And to keep things consistent, I'm actually going to add some Italian herbs to the polenta some salt and some pepper. And then I am also going to add now, let's see how this polenta is first. Salt, pepper, polenta is creaming up nicely and we want it creamy, but remember, since this is a uh, cornmeal, it will need to cook down a little bit to make sure it doesn't uh, get super grainy. Oh my gosh. I don't know what you did, but you're cooking polenta in record timing. Well, you said it's like grits, right? It's kind of like grits, you're right. So it does <laughs> I'm cook from with... Alabama here. So All right, yeah, here. so you know it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna turn this down even lower, and we're going to now add some cream. Just a little bit, because we're being fancy. Ooh, made a mess. Just to be fancy. Let this continue to cook down as we uh, Take a little bit of time for that rosemary herb crusted lamb chop to finish in the oven. The dignity and the power of God. You know, he is majestic in his reign, but you know what was beautiful about his beautiful elevated sense of faith, the highest sense of faith? He didn't stay up in heaven. He actually came down to our level so that he can actually bring us to his level. True sophistication doesn't look down on people, not at all. True sophistication will be willing to drop down to their level so that we can uh, be elevated by, obviously, the grace of God. Now what I'm gonna be doing is making a little bit of an appetizer and it's gonna consist of avocado and some salmon and we're gonna add uh, two types of a, an acid, lemon 
and uh, the lime. And the reason why we're doing that is because I want to make sure that these things don't turn brown and oxidize too quickly. Uh, people are intimidated by, I mean, this looks dangerous, you know, uh, but inside is obviously a very delicious fruit. A lot of people make guacamole with it. Here's how we're going to open this up. Simply going to just break into the skin and let it roll along the knife just like that. And guess what that's going to do? Twist it and you've got a beautiful avocado. To get this pit out, very simple. Take the blunt end of the knife, just tap into it. There you go. And it just clicks right out. And then if you've got your garbage can available, you just want to simply hit it on the countertop and then the uh, seat falls out. Here's how we're going to make this fancy. A lot of times people just scoop it up and uh, just mash it all up and that would be guacamole. We are going to do something a little bit more delicate. We are going to score this carefully all the way through. Watch your fingers because obviously this is a knife. Notice where my fingers are. They're not in the direction of the blade. All right. Same thing for this. So you, you're a martial artist as well. I you? am a martial artist. <laughs> so this does not scare me as much. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of interesting thing too as far as the culture is concerned. The martial arts, even though, you know, it's a deadly form of martial arts, it's all about respect. You know, and there is something very beautiful about the formality of just being able to all stand in, in line and just in the bowing. It's, it's really quite awesome. And I just know, you know, in the South, there is a respect. Let me not use my fingers. <laughs> I'm going to flip this around. Look at that. That beautiful searing is what we want because that's going to impart some delicious flavor and also just some unique coloring, letting people know you know how to cook that. Okay. Here's how we're going to do it. Watch. With a big spoon. Yeah, you continue to stir that. I don't want that to burn because it's got cream in it. Take your spoon and just simply follow along the shell or the peel. And you know what that's going to do? Watch this. It's going to create a nice little effect of some levels and layering. Just turning onto its side and guess what you get? You get this nice little fanning effect. That's what we want. We want to definitely hit that now with a little bit of this acid. I'm going to put two types on there. I'll design that a lot better. We want just to kind of, you know, get that on so that it doesn't oxidize. It's going to accompany beautifully with that salmon, especially when I hit it with a little bit of salt, pepper, and olive oil. All right. Now let's see what we've got here. Grits are going good. You've got it down. Now, let me ask you this. Where did you learn your manners? You know, I mean, because I know this guy. He is, I don't want to say formal, but he's a well-mannered young man. I think a lot of people in the South are, are known for not their hospitality, but their good manners. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think we can do to kind of help elevate people's understanding of the manners that are needed in this world? I think certainly at the table, um, you can have a table culture that has good manners and politeness. I think that is an expression of charity. It makes the guests feel invited, an expression of friendship. Yeah. And uh, I have a friend of mine here in the South, he throws like a little dinner party and he tries to make it nice. And uh, what I notice about it is that it really facilitates conversation. You know, I think huh. in America, sometimes we get the buffet, fast food, Wolf down your food. Now, I like buffets, <laughs> but you're right. It kind of makes you feel like you've got a rush right, and you right. can't just take your time and right. enjoy it. You know, I sometimes, my brother and I will sometimes go to a buffet line since it's all you can eat. We'll eat smaller plates and slowly, right. and we'll actually have competitions on designing our plate. So ridiculous, <laughs> but I mean, but it kind of, you know, makes you think it's not just slop. Well, I think, you know, these things that arise in a culture, like different cultures have different ways of eating, you know, and different yeah. formalities. Yeah, yeah. But I think that all helps to make a, a nice table fellowship or family environment. The Last Supper teaches us a great lesson on sophistication. Jesus ate with a bunch of guys. Some were educated, many of them were not. But by doing something very unique, putting on an apron and washing their feet and serving them bread and wine which he made the body and blood of Christ. Those were the very lessons that truly matured the sense of faith in the people who were eating 
with Jesus at that Last Supper. Let me swing around here. Ah, I used that thing. Don't worry, I knew that this was going to be hot. So I will use another because this is going to be very hot. Oh my gosh. And it really does look perfectly cooked. Want this a little bit on the rare side. I'm actually going to remove this and let it now rest. Oh, looks so good. Rest on my cutting board right now, along with the other goodies in there. And all these drippings that we got going on here, all I'm going to do now, turn the heat up, and we are going to get this cooking. You've got that grits going on. <laughs> God love you. <laughs> to help this, I know there's already a little bit of oil in here, but I'm actually going to pull in here and then uh, get some butter as well to help thicken that sauce up. Going to hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And that'll help flavor it even more. You know, I think you're absolutely right, Father. The um, learning the table manners is huge. In fact, that's something that we do in the seminary as well. We actually go through a, a seminar course called uh, Priest as Public Person. Because, you know, no matter where you are, you, people are kind of watching you anyway. And so what we've got to do is realize that if people are watching us, how do we want to be seen? And uh, there's some great stories of what just a gentleman in the church can do and still remain his idea of simplicity of life and poverty. All right, that's done. He can come off. Let's just simply uh, wait for this to reduce. And I am going to cut into this beautiful rosemary herb crusted lamb chop and I'm going to plate it. Fancy elevating our palate. Elevating the palate is one way we can help our young children mature appropriately. They start off wanting candy, but we've got to teach them how to eat healthy, not just for their body, but eating healthy for their soul as well. Doesn't this look fancy? I can't wait. I know, it's great. Can't so wait. what we've got going on here is I plated up a, a little bit of smoked salmon. You can get that in any store. Just kind of separate it out, put it on the plate, the avocado, lemon and lime, salt, pepper, a little, little uh, garnish, but you can eat the cilantro with it. It's delicious. We plated up the uh, polenta in the red pepper cup. A little bit of the, uh, the red wine. It's got some of the crackling as well from the uh, rosemary as well as the... Um, the, the breadcrumbs. Bring that around to me because we've got this uh, cut already, letting this rest a little bit. And I'm just going to basically cut this into just a, a few more little pieces for you. Put about two for now. And then obviously, if you want more, you can go ahead and get it. Ah, beautiful. It is perfectly cooked, still very pink on the inside. Uh, has I like my lamb and as the chefs recommend it. We're going to just put a little plating using the creaminess of the polenta. Put this right on top. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We have got fancy. Let me grab a little garnish here as well. You know what's kind of neat too? I saw this in a very, very fancy restaurant. Instead of fresh cut flowers, they actually uh, put on their plates, designed some fresh herbs, just like in a little cup. And it sat there and it kind of gave a nice aroma to it all. I just sometimes think that families um, can break out the fancy dinner plates and just eat together. You know, it's great to eat it simple. It's great to eat off paper plates. But every now and then, I don't think we need to wait more than once a year on Thanksgiving and our, you know, our Christmas research to break it all out. The more we do it, the more I think we can elevate people's understanding of, of what it means to be dignified. So God bless this food. Bless you and all of the great work you do at Life on the Rock. I love that show. There's still, you've got great guests on there. and Because uh, you've been a guest. Because I've been a guest. <laughs> Just saying. But uh, really, 
for the ways that you're elevating people's sensibility through your faith and now through this food, please give it a taste test through Christ our Lord. See what you think of this lamb chop on there. Make sure you get a little bit of that polenta cream as well. Oh, I'm getting hungry. It's hot. Mm. Is it good? <laughs> and I know we kind of went out of order. It's delicious. Is it good? Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm all, that's, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> we had a comedian amongst us here. No, this is excellent. I'm glad you like it. Give that a try. That is very unique. It's very simple. Notice, even, uh, even though the uh, avocados usually will turn brown quickly, it didn't because we actually hit it with that lemon and lime. And go ahead and just get a little cilantro in there too. Listen, no, I sound like my mom telling him how to eat. <laughs> but this is what my mom did. She would actually help expand our flavors. And, uh, you know, it definitely helps. Does that? Yeah, it goes good together, the awesome. avocado and the salmon and the cilantro. I'm so glad that you That's like delicious. it. That's delicious. That would be an appetizer? That would be an appetizer. Yeah. We would start that off, put that on the charger, and then, you know, bring this all out with a fancy plating. And you know what, folks? You saw just how simple it was. So remember, formality doesn't necessarily mean fancy, and fancy doesn't mean we turn into snobs. It just means that we've got to have a dignity to us, an elevated sense of our palace. And I think the formality, too, leads us to give thanks. I mean, I, as I mentioned, it kind of slows down the meal. Mm -hmm. You can appreciate it more, and you can give thanks to the cook and to God for providing it. So That's right. the formality serves a great, great purpose. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be slightly informal. I'm going to rush and make myself a plate, and we're going to have dinner. Okay. So we'll see you next time <laughs> on Savoring Our Faith here on EWTN.